Do you have a druid at your table who goes ape for wild shape? Well, if that's you, you're going to want to stay tuned to watch this special Roll20 how-to using the API script called D&D 5e Wild Shape. You definitely want to make sure that if you are watching this video, you have a pro subscription to Roll20 or else you will not have access to the mod API script option. So you're going to go to settings and you're going to go to API scripts. Luckily, this is a script built right right into the Roll20 library. So I type wild shape and there it is, D&D 5e wild shape. You zoom right in there so you guys can see that. One of the nice things about this is the author has gone through an extensive explanation as to exactly what's included with this API. I do wanna point out a few things. Number one, the reason I love this script so much is because it automatically transfers over the intelligence-based, the mind-based statistics that a druid maintains contains in wild shape form. It tells you it's going to copy the intelligence, wisdom, and charisma attributes to the shaped creature automatically for you, which is absolutely amazing. It leaves zero doubt as to exactly what you need to be rolling and what your stats are when your druid is wild shape. Two other things I want to point out really quick. There are two notes that the author has left here. The first one is relatively important. The very first time I ran this script, I did run into this issue and I figured out a workaround. So it's important to draw your attention to it. There is something regarding the images used for the tokens, for the NPCs that are built right into the compendium. So if you try to just choose a standard creature, say like a bear, and just assign that as a wild shape, you're going to get an error message. As luck would have it, I've done the legwork to figure out the workaround for that, which I'm gonna show you right now. And the second thing is the author just making note of a naming convention that they use. I I have a naming convention I have found works for me, which I'm also going to point out. I'm going to go ahead and hit add script and it's going to add a few other scripts in the background. And as always, I wait for my sandbox to reload. While it is doing that, I do want to point out that this method that I demonstrate to you, there is a little bit of a time delay between when you create the creature NPC and when it becomes available to you as a shape in the drop down menu. The author states around four or five seconds, but I have found that it might go anywhere from 30 seconds to 45 seconds before it's available in the list. The sandbox is ready to go. So now I'm going to launch my game. So what I have done is I have added my druid's character. My druid is a dwarf. She is a medium sized creature and these are her stats taking particular note of wisdom being 18, intelligence 12, and no charisma at eight. I've listed four examples here ranging from tiny all the way up to huge creatures just to demonstrate that the API will not only transfer over the statistics but also resize the token and do several things for you. And the beautiful thing about this DMs is that instead of you feeling like you're running all of these extra characters and having to maintain all of these changes when your druid requests to wild shape, you're about to put the control in their hands. So you literally are putting the responsibility on your druid to wild shape when they announce their plan to do so. I'm actually going to start in the macro area and I'm going to add a macro called, you guessed it, wild shape. Now the command action for this script is simply exclamation point ws and so what i do is i create that as a macro for both myself and i also do it as a token action so that my druid when they click on their token will see the macro available to them as well i'm going to go ahead and hit save changes and i'm going to put it in bar down here for myself now what we're going to do is we're actually going to run the script for the very first time and so i'm going to go ahead and hit wild shape and what you're going to see come up are some settings first and i want 
want to just quickly go over a few of these that I've changed. Most of them I have left on default. The biggest one for me is mute shift messages. It's false by default. What that does is I'm going to toggle that to true. So now whenever my Druid clicks on their macro button, it does not show up for any of the players in the chat window. The Druid will see it. I will see it as the DM, but none of the other players will see any of those commands or controls appear in their chat window. PC settings and PC settings, everything is good to go by default right out of the box here. So now come up here to the top and it says edit shapeshifters. What this button does is it gives you the opportunity to add your druid to the list. So I'm going to hit add shapeshifter and it simply says choose a target. So I'm going to hit carrots token. The next thing it gives me the opportunity to add the NPC shapes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the tiny sturge and I'm going to show you how that error message appears and then I'm going to show you the workaround for it. If you notice down here now it says shifter is carrot. It understands that your druid token has been assigned to the shifter position. So now I'm going to hit add NPC. If you take a look here everything's in here by default all your creatures monsters and the like. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to select the sturge and I'm going to hit submit. You should see that error message that the author referenced that it is unable to do so because it cannot duplicate the character nor can it use the image for the token. Here is the workaround and it's actually quite easy. I'm going to open up the Sturges character sheet and I'm going to hit edit. First I'm going to right click on the token and I'm going to hit save image as and I'm just going to type in Sturge token and hit save. Next I'm going to duplicate the Sturge character sheet. When you hit save changes, I'm going to close that character sheet. And now when I go into my journal and I go to the bottom, you see there is an option down here now that says copy of Sturge. I'm going to open that up. I'm going to hit edit. I'm going to put that it is being controlled right now by everyone because it's just myself and my player character in there. What I am then going to do is create my specific naming convention. If you recall a moment ago, you saw that that list was alphabetical. So what I do is I start the name with WS and then I hit a space and I leave the name of the creature. So Sturge and then in parentheses, I put the name of my druid so that I know specifically which character this wild shape applies to. And then I'm going to remove that image and I'm going to add the image that I just downloaded, which it looks exactly the same, but you are in essence uploading your own version of that picture. So that should circumvent any error messages that you get. So I'm going to hit save changes. I'm going to close that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get rid of this Sturge and I'm going to bring out the Sturge that I just created, go back to its character sheet, edit it, and then I'm going to make sure I use the selected token. It's a habit that I've gotten into that anytime I make changes to images, I always go and reassign the token just for my own benefit. So now I'm going to hit add NPC again. Now here's why I do the W. US. I scroll all the way down to the bottom. All of the wild shapes that I create as NPCs will be in the same location at the bottom of this list. So I don't have to scroll through alphabetically and then possibly get confused as to which version of the Sturge that I am choosing. I'm going to exit out and then I'm going to refresh and it should be there in just a moment. So it looks like everything is done brewing and percolating and ready to go. So we're going to hit add NPC. And then when we scroll down in the list, we are going to see that at the very top of the W alphabetical list, you see WS Sturge, and then you see carrot's name in parentheses. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And then I'm going to hit submit. And it says adding shape, please wait, new shape added. If I were to start fresh, I am carrot the druid. I'm going to click on wild shape. And now what you see in the menu is you see an edit button, which is what you can use to add additional shapes. You see Carrot's name, which the Druid would use when they are ready to wild shape back into their standard Druid form. And then now you see that the Sturge is an option. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And what it does is it changes Carrot's token, maintains her nameplate, however. So now if you take a look at the character sheet on the left, that is Carrot the Druid in wild shape form in the form of a Sturge, you see that the wisdom is 
18, the intelligence is 12, and the charisma is 8. Compared to a standard Sturge, who has a wisdom of 8, an intelligence of 2, and a charisma of 6. In addition to that, it also brings in all of Carrot's other abilities that maintain with the druid even in wild shape form. This is absolutely positively a game changer. When the druid is ready to drop form, all they simply have to do is click on their token, click on wild shape again, and select their name, and they come right back to standard form. You have now given complete control over your druid's wild shapes to the player in charge of that PC. You no longer need to stop your flow to change tokens, to remind the player which statistics are theirs versus the creatures that they have wild shaped into. This is a wonderful way for you to take your hands off of the wild shape process in game. Does it require a little bit of setup behind the scenes? Absolutely. But once those creatures are set up, they are in the druids list and at their disposal whenever they need them. So until next time, roll, player roll.